Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about color palettes. More specifically, we're going to try and understand what palettes look better than others, and more importantly, why they do, so that you can stop using boring old cobble and wood. I'm going into this assuming that you're a decent builder who has some experience, but just can't quite seem to take their builds to the next level. This is by no means going to be a beginner level guide. If you're interested in those, I'm sure there are plenty of other tutorials that you can find, but this one is going to be for intermediate level builders. This isn't going to be block for block or hand holdy at all. I'm just going to try and give you the ideas that you need in order to hit the ground running on your build and take it to the next level. Also keep in mind that these are just general rules of thumb. There are specific cases where a build can contradict something that's said here today and still look good. With that out of the way, I have three builds here. All of them are the exact same shape, same dimensions, same roof, same everything. Except for their color palettes. As you can see, these builds all look radically different even though they're basically the same thing, right? They all convey a different feeling. For instance, the one on the left could be seen as your typical medieval red roof townhouse, whereas the middle one is the opposite side of the spectrum being only a humble farmstead. The one on the right even looks like it's from a different time period. I'd say it's more Victorian-esque, and yet, it's still the same build in essence. This just goes to show the sheer power and effect that something as simple as your palette can have on your build. Now, each one of these three builds has a different lesson that we can learn from them to help us make better decisions on the palettes that we want to use in the future. Starting with this one on the left, the main talking point here is going to be contrast. This palette has colors that contrast each other perfectly, which is very important for the legibility of your build. One of the biggest mistakes I see is when people over detail their builds to the point where you can't even tell what it's supposed to be anymore. You might think that's a text variation issue, but evident by some of the later examples you'll see today, this often has little to do with texture variation and everything to do with the colors of the blocks they use. In this build, the edges are defined, the overall shapes are visible, and the levels are clearly separated to make a clean look. The way this is achieved is through the contrast of the colors, for instance, between the bone blocks and the spruce logs. This may be a pretty simple example, but it really shows the point that I'm trying to make that legibility is king and contrast is like his servant. Furthermore, by making the roof a distinct and unique color from the rest of the build, you create a defined separation that helps tell where the walls end and the roof begins. All of this can be simplified into a single question that you should ask yourself. Can someone who's never seen this build before actually tell what it is? If the answer is no, then chances are you need some more contrast in your palette. This second build here teaches us a little lesson that's a bit harder to understand, and that's the idea that you should let your palette inspire your build. Let me explain. As you can see, I went with a lot of neutral tones along with some yellow to get a stark contrast. Now, when I think of yellow on roofs, my mind immediately jumps to the medieval type thatched roofs that you'd find on, say, a farmer's house or something like that. So, I started building it with just a few variants of yellow, and I started to think to myself, hmm, this looks a little basic, what if I tried to make it look more like thatch, right? And so, to make it look more like a thatched roof, I've added fences and buttons and hay, all to try and make it look handmade and rustic. This is the perfect example of how the colors you choose can influence your build. When you start building, you may have a clear goal in mind, but as the colors and shapes mix and match, your imagination will steer itself in a direction that you may have never thought of before. This idea is even carried through to the rest of the build, as I thought that maybe if they could only afford a thatch roof, then they probably couldn't afford glass windows either, and so I elected to put in trap doors as some shutters instead. Like I said, this one can be hard to understand and even harder to master, but you should at least take away one thing, and that's to let your inspiration flow throughout the build. It's always a good idea to have a plan when starting. Just don't stick to it 100%. Let there be deviation. Let there be inspiration. Trust me, it will make your builds look way more natural and creative. Moving on to the final lesson I want to talk about today. Here we have the third building. And this one is going to teach us a little bit about texture variation that I was talking about earlier. Now, I need to say that texture variation is a huge subject, enough for its own video even. Stay tuned for that one coming later. But today we're going to be focusing specifically how it pertains to color palettes. When choosing your palette for a second wall, I want you to ask yourself if you want that wall to be smooth or rough or maybe clean or run down. 
It's very important to ask yourself this when you're choosing your palette because we can actually use the colors of the blocks to convey all the other textures of the wall. Let me explain. Look here at this granite and brick wall. Here you can see that I chose different blocks to have extremely similar colors to another one. Now let's come back to build number two and take a look at this section of wall. Over here I chose two very different shades of brown to go with each other. Now if we take a step back here, we can see that the wall with very similar colors actually looks more clean and well built compared to the wall with different colors which looks a little more rough and rustic. The same can be said for the roofs. The third build has very similar grey tones, whereas the second build has a variety of different yellows and even a little brown mixed in there. The takeaway here is that as a general rule of thumb for texture variation, the more similar the colors are, the cleaner and more put together it looks, whereas having varying shades of color can make something look more handmade or roughed up. Taking everything into account that we learned today, I built this little city street mock-up to show you the skills put into action. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fly across this slowly, and I want you to try and find any spot where two parts of any of the buildings of the same color touch each other. Did you see any? Because I didn't. This is the element of contrast in full use. I made sure that every structure has a contrasting color to the structure next to it. Like, watch as I go along this level. It's gray, to white, to red, to brown, to white again. Let's try a different level here. Red, to blue, to dark brown, to green. It's a very simple idea that can help your builds immensely. You can also see examples of Lesson 2 here. Look at this first building. There's a lot of wood and other basic materials in the palette. That being said, it was probably made by someone who doesn't have a lot of money. Hence why it looks more run down and shoddy with no windows at all. Remember, glass is expensive. Same with this building. Again, more basic materials, although it looks like they shelled out for some nice windows. But that meant they couldn't afford a nice brick chimney to go with it as well. Always be thinking of the story behind your build and tweak your palette to fit in with it. Finally, let's look at some examples of Lesson 3. This blue roof has a lot of different shades and textures which give it a very, well, textured look. But this green roof over here looks so much smoother and cleaner simply because of the similar shades of green. I'm sure if we stood here all day we could find plenty of other examples of each lesson, but let's be real, this video has gone on for long enough. I sincerely hope that you've learned at least one thing today that will help you in your future builds, and if you did, I would very much appreciate it if you liked the video and told me down in the comments below. Have a good one everybody, see you next time.